Now, before you comment and say that this video is some right-wing propaganda and that I am biased, you'd be right. I am biased and I'm looking at this from a right-wing perspective, which reinforces the idea of communities of strength. Also, I have not included all red tubers and skipped quite a few, so don't write surprise comments about why I didn't include this, why I haven't mentioned that, because if I did do that, then this video would have been an hour long, because I came up with over 50 YouTubers in my original research so I had decided to cut it more than in half. But if this video will get a lot of views, I will eventually make a part 2 and even perhaps a part 3. But now as that's out of the way, I'm going to try to be more objective than other people on those tier lists. So I came up with a small methodology that I'm going to employ and keep in mind when I'm going to categorize every single person in this video. The first metric is spitefulness, which is measured by levels of dishonesty, extremism, grifting and aggressiveness. Those in the A category are going to be the most spiteful, F category is the least spiteful. Next metric is quality, which is measured by levels of originality, research and skills, which includes but is not limited for an ability to deliver information, rhetoric and humor. Those in A category are high in quality, which I will refer to as intelligence, and those in F category are least intelligent. Finally, the most important metric is damage, which is defined by their reach and activity and ultimately the social damage those leftists are doing with their content. As you can guess, the most socially damaging people are in the A category and the least socially damaging people are in the F category. Usually in videos like this, those in the A or S category are the best, yet here is the absolute inverse of that, with the exception of metric of intelligence or quality. So it's going to be an unusual tier list, so don't get surprised that if I hypothetically rank Hedge Bomber Guy to be B tier or Shuan Head to be as D tier, here. It's mostly about the social damage those people are producing that I'm concerned about, and intelligence often comes second or even third after spitefulness. But alas, the rules are set, so let's begin. The first person who I will rate in this video is going to be Peter Coffin, a person of an insufferable and narcissistic character and he would serve simply as an example of a person who would be on the F tier. Even though his level of spitefulness is extremely high, probably even an A tier, but due to his low levels of overall damage, mostly due to his irrelevance, who is now despite having almost 100 times more subscribers than I do, has less than twice the amount of people people watching him, which is truly remarkable and quite pathetic, so F tier. The next person who will receive another F tier is going to be drum rolls Faraday Speaks, a self-proclaimed ex-alt-writer who had made little arguments of substance and spent most of his minutes of fame apologizing for his past sins, which is why he lost an audience so quickly as well as he had threatened some right-wingers with doxing if they didn't comply to his stupid demands. Although he has a high amount of spitefulness, this comeback is thankfully off of YouTube, so I can safely proclaim that his grifting career is over, pretty pathetic, so yeah, big F. Next one on the list is Country Points, and I could make a very long video about her, and I already did too in fact, yet given her such popularity, you will pretty much know what I will have to say. Now, I will give her credit and mark her intelligence as a straight A, despite her dismissal of an evolutionary and biological component in some areas, but it's pretty much prevalent all across the left, so whatever. She's also very spiteful and prone to misrepresentation and strawmans of her opponents, as two of my my videos about her would suggest. Despite the media claiming that she understands exactly who she's dealing with, well, used to deal with back in the days, she doesn't. And maybe she does understand JK Rowling and those 14 year old Nazi LARPers who are turning trans on the next year, she fails miserably at understanding people of a higher intelligence who are on the right. Now, the social damage that she is doing is quite remarkable. She is discouraging evolutionary adaptive lifestyles and is encouraging decadent and maladaptive lifestyles. So, it's a definite A, which is not good. 
Then we got Zanderhall, an apparent child of ContraPoints, who, unlike Philosophy Tube, does not copy her content and just ponders his stupidity into the abyss of the Suicide Squad that watches him. Honestly, he might be the most dumbest bread tuber out there, especially considering that he thinks that political beliefs are formed by aesthetics and perception, which he's not totally wrong on, but it only says a lot that he definitely hasn't thought about politics and he is in the fights just for the feelings as evident by his most famous grifting video and his debates where he performs poorly. Now I don't consider him to be dishonest and he is not that irrelevant but definitely not a threat and is pretty useful as evident by his recent debate with Lauren Southern so I'm giving him a D instead of an F. Next we got Vosh, who is blatantly ignorant on many respects, yet because he is a skilled debater and knows how to frame a discussion and make his opponent look like an idiot, I'd put him in high A tier list in intelligence, yet as I have mentioned, he lacks knowledge and in many crucial areas and often appears to be an overconfidently acting idiot. He is also very aggressive, spiteful and dishonest and a political tribalist, so that's another A. Not to mention that he is considered to be the pimp of the left, deciding which leftists are to be forgiven for their past conservative misgivings, so he has a massive outreach where he promotes decadent lifestyles and extremist political ideologies, for which in a just society, YouTube is to delete his channel, but YouTube is instead busy deleting channels like Stefan Malinus. The worst part about him probably is not that all the previous characteristics that I've given, but the fact that he does not believe in truth and principles and believes that power determines truth and you can basically make people believe whatever you want to believe and has even applied this logic to the holocaust which should tell you what a person Vosh is so I'll give him a solid and an unquestionable A in my opinion. Next we got Destiny, another cancerous monstrosity who again is a very skillful debater but even has less knowledge than Vosh. About many topics he speaks about in full confidence and arrogance, sometimes unwilling to be intellectually honest. The total damage by Destiny has been done already and now he is not as useful to the left as he used to in the past and perhaps he will fade into obscurity or become a shitlord liberal. So my solid verdict is B. Following next is Hassan Abi, a person to whom I'm going to respond in a couple of months or even earlier and a person who can be described as a basic leftist who built his audience by doing cheap reaction videos. There's not much I could comment upon his intellect, especially considering I have interacted with people who love him and frankly I'm of a very low opinion about their mental faculties. Although he is a very radical and is pushing for hardcore leftism and has a huge microphone, he is probably one of the few leftists whose commentary I'm not worried about as his arguments are very basic, often are built on falsehoods and could be easily argued against. He knows how to make his giant audience laugh and reconfirm their beliefs but nothing more. See. The next person is Hakim and I have already made a video about him. Now he is the only open orthodox Marxist or a tanky in this compilation so he'll speak not just for himself. But anyways, I'm not afraid of his ideas either, they are pretty easy to destroy and that's how I started my YouTube channel, by responding to tankies, but I do highly respect him for going all the way with his ideology and being true to the ideals of Marxism, which is a compliment that I will never give Wash or any other scumbag leftist who twist the words and ideas of Marxists to make them agree with their position. So with regards to spitefulness, although he is advocating for very extremist beliefs and frankly revolutions that if YouTube were to actually apply their guidelines rules uh, you know he would be banned but his views have no future and I would not be worried about them as his ideas are not going to appeal to the ruling elite and therefore are useless so probably a D which is not the worst place in my tier list quite frankly D or C are probably the best places in my tier list.
The next person who is similar to Hakim is Non-Compete, which is a dying leftist anarchist YouTube channel to whom I wanted to respond and perhaps sometimes I will, but this person's argumentation for anarchism is evidently weak and frankly the people who watch him already are very deep into the rabbit hole, so I would not be worried about him either. I'm mostly feeling sorry for him actually, as the best thing he could achieve is to contribute to anarcho-tyranny and not actual anarchism which is not even possible in the current circumstances so i think that's an f very sorry the next bread tuber is a typical white guilted canadian woman uh, by the name of maxi who is currently less popular or trending than yours truly despite having a large following now this is the only person in the tier list where there is no video that she made that i haven't watched so when i say that her activity can be described as a summarizing woke leftist discourses without proving any of them and if you have watched more than three videos of hers you know I'm right. She is so radical uh, that she believes that her own country and the country in which I reside in Canada does not exist, yet she wants to give it back to the indigenous people, which are not the people who have built this country, if you're wondering. Uh, she is also anti-natalist and believes in every trending leftist dogma out there because it would make her a good person. Now, her beliefs are very spiteful and damaging to most people existing in the West if they were to be implemented, but I don't believe she is a bad person, just a lady who got manipulated and brainwashed by the system and with little following, so I wouldn't be worried. Next one is actual Jake. Now, the first time I actually learned about Jake was through his debate with John Doyle, where he had obnoxiously strawmaned and interrupted him in any possible manner. His content can be best described as a constant stream of obsessive reaction videos to the right, and his political beliefs can be best described as of an orthodox social justice warrior with little room for flexibility. I guess he may be appealing to people due to his personal reflections on certain and stuff time to time but that aside I don't find him quite intelligent and fairly a standard product of the leftist conveyor of culture. Therefore his originality and qualities may be C, spitefulness B and adding that all together this brings me to a rating of D+, mostly due to his irrelevance. Next we have Lindsay Ellis, who is another summarizing leftist entity who spends her time repeating the talking points of leftist academia and other people as well as supporting cancel culture. In regards to her being deeply troubled by J.K. Rowling, which is another shit lip who is apparently not pure enough for her. Now, she, unlike Maxi, is very repulsive and annoying to listen to, so you would imagine I didn't watch much of her videos, yet she is fairly intelligent and creative, so I'd give her full credit here, but my overall verdict is B, probably B-, mostly due to her massive audience and the normalization of terrible behaviors and ideas. The last but not least woman on today's tier list is Kristen Leo, a person to which I have already responded in the video. Now, her spitefulness levels are relatively high as she evidently is bitter towards men and order, as it can be clearly seen in my last video about her, but she is also very intelligent, intellectually honest, yes she is, from, well, at least from what I've seen, and even self-aware to realize that her decadent bullshit is maladaptive, yet it does not stop her from engaging in it, so I'm giving her a B, but later in the video I will change my mind. But anyways, now the final woman of today's video is going to be Karlyn Borisenko, who although is not on the left and identifies as a libertarian, works in the left's favor by delegitimizing white people and refusing to acknowledge their existence. She's not very smart and in fact quite the opposite, nor is self-aware despite having a PhD in psychology and makes very basic anti-wokist and anti-democratic party videos that may be of interest to certain conservative midwits and possibly some centrists and liberals, but no one more. I'd honestly give her an F, but the damages that she is doing are somewhat prominent as well as due to many conservatives seeing her somewhat as a thought leader, I'm giving her a D, even though a couple of thousand people have already left her since her comments about CRT, she has still some influence on the rest. The next grifting person, drum rolls, is a self-proclaimed open-minded 
three thinker centrist by the name of Hunter Avalon, a person about which I have dedicated not one but two videos criticizing him at length from all possible angles, so I won't bother mentioning his personality here, I think it's obvious. We'll just say that he's an incredibly stupid and frankly I don't even think that his damage is somewhat is big in comparison to other YouTubers I have listed so far, because of a low reach and frankly weak argumentation, but he does receive a high score on spitefulness, so instead of being an F, he is a D. Next person on the list is The Amazing Atheist, a person that most people have watched including myself since we've been around on the internet and eventually have abundant watching, and frankly despite his grifting and wrong attitudes about certain stuff, he does displace a good degree of self-awareness time to time, sometimes realizing how the terrible climate around him is, and that in addition to his style and delivery strikes me off as him being relatively intelligent so definitely an A for quality, but I do believe that he is unnecessarily aggressive and is a grifter, as I have mentioned, so he will also get a medium score on spitefulness, which is not a good thing, but ultimately he gets a low score on damage as although many of his ideas are degenerate, he is far from the mainstream levels of spitefulness and he has a very low levels of reach, which is only 6 times more than I reach, despite him having about a million subscribers since 2016. So I'll rank him as C, pretty creative, intelligent, self-aware, yet is dependent on social approval and is propagating terrible beliefs and frankly sometimes I'm feeling sorry for him. Next on the list we got The Jimmy Show, which is apparently an atheist show that is marketing to women, where its host spends his time mansplaining for hours about a certain thing one should not spend more than a second to. Very low effort content that consists mostly of him reacting to cringy conservative and Christian videos, pushing a moderately decadent message. Now I don't consider him particularly intelligent, nor spiteful in any way, and I believe he is not a hateful person, but is doing what he believes in, yet I think I have developed an allergy to the kinds of people that have his personality traits, which includes but is not limited to talking all the time and being overly nice, so I might be biased. Finally, he has a relatively moderate reach with his videos, although thankfully not as he used to in the past, and in fact people are unsubscribing from him, thereby my final verdict would be D. The next person on the list is Thought Slime, who probably has one of the worst repulsing styles to narrate his videos ever, which includes the worst jokes and aesthetics possible. Now, strangely enough, his videos are not as bad as his self-presentation and his hatred and pathologization of conservatism is pretty big throughout his videos and so is his audience, which leads me to place him in the B category. The following person is Three Arrows, who specializes in turning his arguments into narratives and studies of events, which is a technique that I recommend people on the right using, as it is very subversive and is very good at spreading a message, even though sometimes this narrative has little to do with the arguments that he is arguing for. Honestly, I find him to be very dishonest, and if you are ever to do a narrative story masquerading as an argument, please study him, but make it more intellectual actually honest, so my verdict is high score on spitefulness, high score on intelligence and a high score on reach. B. Next one on the line is Kraut, and you will probably recognize him as a person who makes historical videos, yet this is not what he used to do in the past, where he first made your typical yet with some originality takes on social justice warriors and Islam, which included bigotry and hatred, and then when the wind started shifting to the leftist direction, he started producing anti-race realist videos, which not just made him a dishonest person, misinterpreting their positions and attacking a straw man, but frankly as a fool if a person who is familiar with the scientific literature were to watch it. But since then he made shitty takes on history with a strong liberal bias, taking accounts from biased sources, pseudo-sources and conspiracy theories or legends, twisting them, not mentioning other sources, lying about real history in order to fit into his narrative. Now it might be different with his latest Mexico video that I haven't watched, but it was the case with his allied bombings videos, Turkey 
and Japan. The people who knew him in private, at least the ones who I've spoken to, are all of a bad opinion about him, as he's a raging narcissist, and I had already made a video about him covering just that, so you can give that a watch. So my ultimate verdict is B or A in spitefulness, B in intelligence, and C for the damage, as his videos are not that radical in comparison to others. The next person is Joe's or Hosea, whom I stopped watching a year ago due to his unbearable intellectual dishonesty, in which he not just lies about what other people are doing and misrepresents their arguments, but also lies and makes weak arguments for his own case, which in my view makes it work against himself, as it did with Kraut with his anti-race realism phase. Now, this is the person who I would not even watch if I was a leftist, but if leftists watch him, that's their problem and their arguments would appear weaker. I want spend much time on him, I'll give him a rating of B, mostly for his unbearable dishonesty that frankly I'm not sure he has enough self-awareness to even realize. Now, the final person on the list is Big Chual, whose social critique I sometimes enjoy listening to, although never agreeing with his normative prescriptions and adopting his ideology. For some reason, him talking often reminds me of a girl makeup vlog, even though I have never watched those types of videos. He often spends most of his time obsessing over little points a person who he responds to made and often dumps down the positions of other people and calling them certain strawmanning names. Therefore, his analysis often is inaccurate, which fades in comparison to, for instance, to the analysis of the distributist. For his spitefulness, I'm giving him a C, maybe a B. For his quality, he receives a B. And with regards to his damage, I'm giving him a C. Although his audience is big, ultimately judging by his comments, he is appealing to people who are not particularly smart nor are political, which makes sense why they are drawn to his basic and simplistic analysis. Now, after reviewing it again, I have changed my mind and placed Hassan one tier higher and Jose one tier lower. Perhaps I could have also moved Kristen Leo from B to C, as I've mentioned previously, but I'm actually giving it up to you. Anyways, to organize this list properly, I'd probably say that you should worry about people who are in the C and higher levels, with the exception of the Amazing Atheist and Joel. Those who are in tier D and F are irrelevant, and frankly some of them make the rest of the left appear stupid. Half of those in tier B and A I would consider to be a serious opponent to the right cause and in most cases are winning due to a disorganization of the right and deplatforming. If I were to reorganize this list differently, such as by individual metrics of either annoyance, bad argumentation, low followers or something else, then it would obviously look different. This was an attempt of creating a little compilation of different metrics or scales mixed up together with my subjective opinion. Given the fact that I have not covered many other bread tubers due to a limit of time, if you wish I can create a part 2 on that with perhaps an upgraded methodology, but that's about where it gets for today. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider to subscribe to my channel and my other accounts where I'm more active than on YouTube. If you wish to contact me, you can do so through my Twitter, Discord server or Telegram and thank you for watching.